Thank you, Professor Pastorius. I didn't realize the University of Pretoria is doing so much in this climate change research field. Now, let's cross live to Geneva. I'm going to ask Mr. Kofi Annan, the president of the Global Humanitarian Forum, to start the ball rolling with our workshop and tell us what he sees as so important about this issue of climate justice. Mr. Annan, it's all yours. Thank you very much, uh, Nisha. It's good to see you again, and I'm glad that you are there once again leading this discussion uh, for us. Members of the academic staff, students, distinguished guests, and finally, my two good friends, Desmond and Mary. First of all, let me say how glad I am to see all you young people come together to discuss the important issue of climate justice. This is your planet. We, my delegation, I expect to leave it to you in good health. And I'm really happy that you are engaged and you are there with us, determined to keep us going and to ensure that we do the right thing. Today, it is generally accepted that climate change is an all-encompassing threat, a threat to health, to economic and social well-being, political stability, and a threat to our natural habitat. Even though the 50 least developed countries account for less than 1% of CO2 emissions, they are bearing the brunt when it comes to the impact of climate change. Of course, the impact is felt worldwide. Changing and extreme weather patterns, prolonged droughts, floods, hurricanes, and typhoons with devastating consequences on communities and individuals. We see it all around our continent. But the poor are much more exposed and often do not have the knowledge or means to cope and adapt. We also know that the United States, Europe, Russia, China, India, and Japan are responsible for over three quarters of global emissions. We live in a global village, and we each have a responsibility to protect our planet. Isn't it logical and equitable, therefore, to insist that those who pollute have a duty to clean up? Pollution by some affects all of us. Every one of us needs to understand that pollution has a cost, and climate change could be the major constraint on, on all human endeavors. And this cost must be borne by the polluter. Least responsible for greenhouse gas emissions, as I said earlier, are the world's poorest communities, and yet they suffer the most from climate change. This is fundamentally unjust. If efforts to build a global framework to address climate change are to succeed and endure, they must be based on the principles of fairness and equity. A fair and just approach would facilitate agreement at the UN Climate Conference in Copenhagen later this year. And let me stress, we cannot afford to fail in Copenhagen. I believe that monies collected from polluters should be used to set up a global fund to help poor countries adapt, to help them re reduce their vulnerability and increase their resilience to climate change. Better information and environmentally sustainable technologies should also be shared to enable developing countries to go green or to grow green, as we, we normally put it. The potential global catastrophe of climate change on, in the medium to the longer term is something that none of us would want to see. None of us as individuals or even as countries would want to see this happen. And that is why we must take collective action now to avoid such a scenario. So we need political leadership with a vision that goes beyond the next election cycle. Countries and people everywhere have reaffirmed time and again 
their commitment to uphold human rights and promote the principles of equity and justice. We can and must reaffirm these same principles for climate change. This is why the Global Humanitarian Forum will launch a movement in uh, this June to push for a successful outcome of the climate change negotiations in Copenhagen. The Alliance for Climate Justice will engage heads of states and governments as they prepare for Copenhagen. The message will be simple, a very simple message. We demand a robust post-Kyoto protocol, which is building, which, which, which will build on what we have and will be binding and fair. We must assume our responsibilities to protect the planet and manage its resources in a sustainable manner. Polluters must not be given a free ride. They should pay for the cleanup and adaptation. This is a duty imposed on them by their behavior. Each of us must do our part. We all have a responsibility to pressure our polit political leaders to act decisively in Copenhagen. I believe that by working together, NGOs, the media, business, youth and women's groups, professional associations, trade unions and parliamentarians, all of us can mobilize the support necessary to achieve climate justice. I very much look forward to hearing your thoughts on these issues today, and I'm really happy that so many of you came together to participate in this debate. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Annan, for setting the broad principles that we are going to be discussing here in Pretoria. And we hope you'll be paying close attention from Geneva.